Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about none other than the Samsung Galaxy S5 and see how this phone holds up in 2021. Now what I can tell you is, is that for sure, as I always state, I really don't think anybody should be using the Galaxy S5. I think, you know, specifically you should probably be focusing more on like the Galaxy S8 or newer if you're going to go for the Samsung side. But surprisingly, I mean, I actually did some things last year with the Galaxy S5 that made it a pretty interesting deal that I didn't even know that you could do and that specifically with the custom ROMs, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, like I said, I wouldn't recommend picking up the Galaxy S5 right now, but I will find the cheapest Galaxy you know, S8s and S9s and other devices that I'd recommend this year in the description below. You can go ahead and get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the Samsung Galaxy S5 on the front, you do have, you know, the 5.1 inch Super AMOLED panel. It's a full HD panel, which is pretty much the same thing we got going for the Galaxy S21. But what I can tell you is, is actually the panel isn't bad, but specifically has as I said before, when you have, you know, a specific panel like this, it isn't really the best thing to do when you necessarily have, you know, the plastic display over it. You know, as I stated before, it is kind of an issue. It, it was kind of like a plastic film, you know, like the iPad Airs, it was kind of like the same exact thing. You have like a little bit of a gap between the actual panel itself and the, you know, display. I, did, I didn't like it, but it wasn't really that bad. And I think I'm pretty much over it at this point. You had a home button on the front, which was kind of like a fingerprint sensor, which is kind of, I had a fingerprint sensor actually. The capacitive keys on the sides and it really wasn't a bad looking phone i actually liked it but i did think the galaxy s4 looked better than this phone that was always the number one thing i thought of the s4 with its slimmer bezels on the sides that phone i think looked better than the s5 even though the s5 was the better phone overall you on the bottom you had the usb 3.0 port with like a little flap on it i'm so glad samsung removed these they had them on the note 3 as well it's such a strange thing i never understood why they had that i think it was for like ip certification or something you had the micro sd card slot on this phone as well and a headphone jack which is great but like I said, this phone has IP certification as well, which is really, really awesome. And on the back, you have that removable back, which is so awesome. I'm so glad this phone had that capability. And at the end of the day, as I stated, this is still one of the strongest things about this phone. The fact that you can go ahead and really do anything with this phone. I mean, those things are really, really awesome. You can remove the battery. You can, you know, expand the storage here too. And as stated before, when you have a device like this that has that type of functionality, as long as the hardware inside is good, you're pretty much set. You could just keep using this phone forever. Now, obviously it's gonna be slower, the camera's not gonna be that great and all that other stuff, but really, realistically, you know, the number one thing that goes faulty most of the time is the battery for a lot of people and you can remove it here, which is great. So in terms of the outside, I actually think this phone is still super functional. I think it still has a lot of capability. Obviously it's not perfect. You know, I'd rather have a Galaxy S, you know, seven than this thing, but it's still pretty surprising the functionality you have from this device. Now. I will go ahead and hit on the camera because we're pretty much already there. It did have a single camera set up, so that in and of itself kind of does, you know, make me feel away. But it was a 16 megapixel sensor. You could do 4K videos on it, which was actually pretty surprising because this thing came out in 2014. There weren't really a crazy amount of phones that could do 4K. I don't know if the Galaxy S4 had that capability, but, you know, the Galaxy S6 had 4K. The iPhone 6S a year later from the Galaxy S5 had 4K. So I was really glad that this phone had that type of capability at this time. But as I stated, I didn't use the Galaxy S5 at that time. I only got it a few years later. But this single camera is still actually pretty pretty decent when you consider the phone is a seven year old over seven year old phone and you know the fact that it still turns on still has a lot of capability I think the camera is actually a pretty decent aspect of it especially the price tag all that stuff considered if a phone manufacturer dropped a phone like this in this day and age today it would be a horrible camera setup it's a single camera it's really not that great no 4k 60 nothing like that but I think the mixture of the you know software of the camera which had a ton of features and the quality of the lens that Samsung was using at the time it was actually a really good camera setup for the most part in my opinion i just think the worst part about this camera not even the 4k 60 not even the single camera lens with no multiple sensors it's the front camera the two megapixel front facing camera that's only 1080p that is kind of a problem you know i i don't think that's a good thing that's definitely a more of a bad thing than anything else but as I stated before, it is what it is. If there was one thing I could change about the camera on this phone, it would definitely be the front camera. But I think for all intents and purposes, this camera was net positive. I think it was a pretty good camera overall. But as stated, I would probably have something like, you know, a Galaxy S8 front camera, even though that wasn't even that great. I would rather have something like that than this. So that really pretty much covers it up in the camera standpoint. Now moving on to 
probably one of the best aspects of this phone and I'm still so shocked, you know, because typically when I talk about the software, especially for one of these devices, it's usually a horrible experience, especially Samsung, you know, even if you go to like the Samsung Galaxy S8, it's just kind of a weird experience, you know, but the battery life is pretty good on those phones. With this device, because of its removable battery, that in and of itself makes it that much better, but the software aspect is something that I found out last year that you can actually fully custom ROM, fully root, and I actually ended up doing that. I rooted my Galaxy S5 and I custom ROMed my Galaxy S5 and I was able to install an Android 10 ROM on that device. Now it wasn't the smoothest experience. I ran into a lot of issues. I think I boot looped that phone twice but I ended up getting it back in recovery mode. But this is what I'll tell you. If you're keeping it stock, it started off with Android 4.4. It's you know now you can get Android 6.0 and it's not going any other further than that. And obviously that's severely outdated. You're not going to have any of the cool features that we have nowadays. You're still going to be able to download some apps and stuff, but it's not going to be as functional as you may think. But here's the thing. With the Samsung Galaxy S5 rooted and custom ROMed, that is some awesome capability that you have. After I custom ROMed it and I rooted it, it was a like a brand new phone. It wasn't still like a crazy fast phone, but the customizability I had from it, the capability I had from it, it was just so smooth. The only problem was it overheated a little bit, a little bit more than usual. But other than that, I was shocked that I was even able to get that kind of software on this type of device. And I want to get Android 11 on it and I probably will end up doing it. But that is awesome. That is something that really shocked me. And I really, really love that kind of stuff. And with this type of device, this in and of itself, the software customizability of it, and even going into the battery segment, it's probably, I mean, 2,800 million power battery, it's removable. So even the battery size isn't even that big of a deal. You can just put a bigger battery in it if you want. They, you know, some of the case manufacturers developed cases with batteries in them that you literally snap to the back of the phone, which is awesome on this type of device. And at the end of the day, you have a lot of capability when it comes down to the software and the battery. And it's probably one of the best segments of this phone, if I'm being honest. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Now, ending it off with the performance, the Samsung Galaxy S5 has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chipset an Adreno 330 GPU, and two different models of this phone, the two gigabyte models for both of them though, for both storage models. And I think at the end of the day, as typical, you know, you probably were already expecting me to say this, it's definitely not, you know, the fastest iPad, it's definitely not the fastest phone that ever came out. It, I don't even think at that time it was like extremely fast, but it's a pretty good capable phone when you consider everything that this phone has gone through okay the years and years and years of just support and then not support and then it kind of linger around and then kind of lingering around for many years the price tag of this phone i feel like it could be worse but if you're keeping it stock, obviously it's not going to be that great because it's severely outdated, let's be real. But when you have something that's custom ROMed on this type of device, that is seriously some really cool stuff. And as I stated before, that is extremely important. When you have a device like this, the overall performance is going to be okay. Obviously, it's not going to be the best performing device, but it's going to have a lot of capability regardless. And I think that's a really, really strong asset about this device. The fact that it's this old and it still has some capability in the smoothness factor, obviously it's not that fast but it's still kind of capable and you know when you consider this thing as a seven year old phone i would kind of put it to where i would kind of put the you know iphone 6 at it's definitely not like a insanely fast phone but it's still surprisingly okay it's a little glitchy it's definitely not as smooth as an iphone 6 but i think it's okay and when you you know flash something like you know this specific rom that i installed the android 10 one you are going to have a surprisingly smooth experience from it which i was honestly shocked by so in terms of that that really pretty much covers it up and to kind of sum up the video and to answer the question should did you go and buy a Samsung Galaxy S5 in 2021? Well, this is what I'll tell you. I don't think the Samsung Galaxy S5 is worth it in any way right now in 2021. You were so much better off picking up something like the original Google Pixel, but I wouldn't even recommend picking up one of those phones. I would recommend picking up something like a Pixel 4, a Pixel 4a. That's going to give you a much better experience. Something like a Galaxy S10. At this point, it's kind of worth it to spend a little bit more money or save a little bit more money to get a better phone so you don't have to go and upgrade every single year. If you're looking at a Galaxy S5 to purchase, I would not recommend it at all, even if you were to custom ROM, and here's why. I'm somebody who did custom ROM my Galaxy S5, and I had a pretty okay experience with that. I'm, I was shocked by how much capability I was able to get from this type of device, but I wouldn't necessarily want to use it as a main piece of software because there are still so many glitches that happen when you have a custom ROM. 
Yes, it's cool that we can get Android 10 and Android 11, but not everything works. I mean, sometimes the cameras don't work, Wi-Fi doesn't work, Bluetooth doesn't work. These are like basic functionalities that we want from a device. And when you flash a custom ROM like this, it's not really gonna have that capability. So at the end of the day, yes, it's cool to have that type of software, but it's more practical to have something that's like fully functional. I didn't use this phone as a main phone for years, so I don't know. But like if I was too on a, like a custom ROM, it'd be kind of a weird experience, I'm sure. But there's still a lot of strong assets for it. The display's pretty good, removable battery, remov removable back. Still, you kind of have like a fingerprint sensor on the front, the custom ROM capability. The performance is kind of okay, and it's a super old phone now, so you can actually get it for pretty cheap. And the back camera's pretty good. But there are still a lot of problems with this phone. It's pretty old stock. It's completely outdated. The performance isn't like crazy good. It's pretty slow when it comes down to it, to be completely honest. But if you can get over those things, I mean, maybe the Galaxy S5 is worth it to you. But I would highly recommend everyone to pick up something like a Galaxy S9, a Galaxy S10, a OnePlus 7 or something like that. One of those type of phones, you know, anything that's like around 2018 newer, I would not recommend getting this type of phone anymore, to be honest. So... That really pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I'll, every single one of you guys, hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.